My name is Ajerio Kal. I work with the Population Council. I've been working with the Population Council for the past three and a half years. I recently joined the OBA team, uh, of which I'm working on qualitative uh, studies that have been done. I'm reviewing data on the qualitative studies collected so far in Kenya. And uh, especially what I'm doing currently is to review uh, voucher programs. It's uh, more or less a systematic review of all voucher programs in the developing countries to try and see what works and what doesn't work uh, within these different voucher programs. So we're evaluating, you know, it's an evaluation of uh, all voucher programs looking at uh, published literature, grey literature, and even talking to experts about all this, you know, to try and synthesize this information uh, to know what is good and what is not good for voucher programs. Now what we're looking at uh, is the management issues we are also looking at implementation issues, uh, monitoring and evaluation issues, and um, we are also trying to know who are funding these programs. Is it mostly donors? Is it mostly the government? We are also looking at aspects of marketing. How do they market their products? You know, do they do it through the media or by word of mouth? So, what's emerging is that most programs are donor funded, a few are government funded. Um, in terms of implement management, most have a voucher management agency, you know, it's a, a system that helps, you know, run the process. So most have this in place and a number also contract, you know, through public and private um, providers, you know, to provide services to target group members. Again, a number also have marketing strategies in place for pre and post launch of these programs. A lot more still needs to, to be done, you know, to try and tighten, you know, like issues of fraud and even um, fraud both uh, on the consumer level and even on the provider level. This needs to be tightened up, you know, to ensure that all this runs well and uh, if it's donor funded money, then uh, the money is well accounted for. So I think this, uh, what we'll um, actually come up with, you know, we'll come, we'll come up with some assumptions of what a good voucher program should be. So in our conclusions of the review, we'll actually say, you know, a good voucher program should have such and such things in place, you know, to be uh, on that th threshold, you know, of a good voucher program. Voucher programs globally are growing and um, this is actually based on evidence from recent studies done by Belos and Mayer that um, vouchers uh, increase uh, access to services and even improving quality of the services to target group members. And um, a number of them actually provide sexual reproductive health services. Uh, they also provide family planning services and other specific services like uh, gender-based violence services and uh, and uh, STI screen, STI, STI screening and testing, and cervical cancer screening and testing as well. Okay. Yeah. And um, so, where are the vouchers used, and how? Uh, vouchers are context-specific, I would say, because they're mainly spurred by. Uh, specific uh, health problems, you know, in different contexts. So you might find that maybe in Kenya the problem is maternal health. In another place like Nicaragua, it could be sexually transmitted infections among female sex workers. So it all depends on the problems affecting different countries. Uh, problems actually identified, you know, as a most immediate health problem. Watchers were actually introduced, I think, to help address specific health problems. But uh, you'd also realize that some voucher programs just came up because of success of other voucher programs. For instance, in Pakistan, there's a um, voucher program called the Green Star, which actually, the Green Star too, I think, which came up just because of success of another voucher program. But other voucher programs also came up because of addressing specific health issues. Uh, especially targeting the marginalized and uh, at risk populations, especially the poor, so that you know, for instance, to help them access maternal health uh, services, especially delivery and even uh, postnatal care. The structure of different voucher programs are 
context uh, specific because they come up because of a specific need and uh, at other times you know uh, some are donor funded others are government led and this actually comes with its own internal structures and implementation processes but uh, virtually most voucher programs have a voucher management agency that oversees the um, process of uh, providing the vouchers and even the, the, uh, assessing the services provided to, to the target group members. But um, all the same, I would say uh, the differences are not huge enough, he, uh, are not big uh, among the voucher programs, uh, given that uh, the basis of, uh, of developing the voucher programs is more or less similar across the different voucher programs. I think the biggest drivers of uh, program design uh, includes the need to provide the services, you know, to to the target group members. Um, for instance, uh, what is required is to have a good management system, to have a good uh, monitoring and evaluation system. These are key for uh, for a voucher program to be successful. Um, the other thing is the need for quality of services to the target group members. All these are very important and even the marketing strategies are also important you know, to, to encourage um, uh, uptake of services by the different target group members. Okay. In my view, I'm very optimistic about um, how voucher programs would uh, evolve in the future given that uh, most of the populations are actually out, are not accessing, you know, like basic health services, which is uh, important, especially the situation is dire in developing countries, where, for instance, um, about uh, half of uh, deliveries are being done outside the healthcare system. So this just shows, you know, the importance of vouchers, because the good thing with, with vouchers is that uh, they create demand for services and uh, even improve the quality of services received. So I think this is one way of reaching you know, the marginalized uh, communities to give them access to health services that they really need and also help you know, reduce maternal, maternal, maternal mortality and even um, uh, morbidity among women and even children.